The 100mm system is the most commonly used filter system in the Lee range. It's a great all-rounder and can be used for the DSLR, for large format, for medium format cameras, and for anything except ultra-wide angle lenses. The holder is the, the key part of the system. It comes ready assembled with two guide rails for filters. It fits to the lens this way via an adapter. And actually, before I put it on, let me just explain. There are two different kinds of adapters. There is the standard type here, which, as its name suggests, has got a normally positioned thread on the back of the adapter, and the wide angle type, which has a recessed thread. Uh, and this allows the holder itself to be held slightly closer to the lens, and that is less likely to produce vignetting on a wide angle lens. Now you might think, why would you have two different types? The standard one is slightly uh, cheaper, uh, which may make it suitable for some people, but uh, the wide angle type can be used with all lenses actually from, with a filter thread from 49 to 82 millimeters. So, uh, and it works great with, with pretty well any lens. If you use a lens wider than 24 millimeters, as a rule of thumb, I would suggest you always choose the wide angle adapter. I think it's important to emphasize that most people, when they, when they do photography, they end up with several lenses. Certainly I've got several. And many of those lenses have different front filter threads. This one has a 67 mil thread. This one a 62, and this camera has a 58 millimeter thread. And the great thing is that you can use one single holder for all of those lenses and they will all fit via different sized adapters. So it's a very inexpensive solution to using the range. The holder has two lugs on one side and a spring-loaded brass lug on the other. And it's important to emphasize that that is a plunger system and not a screw. So always remember that. It's very easy to apply like that with a spring load, very easy to remove. And with use, it becomes second nature. It's, it couldn't be easier. There is one variation of the 100 millimeter system, and that is the push-on holder, which is designed for very large lenses with a diameter of 100 millimeters. And this goes directly onto the lens itself, like this. They can be adapted to smaller lenses, uh, but generally this is the type of lens for which this is suitable. Uh, usually a wide angle lens on a medium format camera. There are quite a number of situations in the landscape where you can require two different filters, two graduated filters at different angles to one another. And the Lee 100 system does have a solution to that. And that is the tandem adapter here. Let me just illustrate this by putting on a balancing, a light balancing 0.9 soft filter at the back, which would be a common situation where you have a brighter sky and a darker landscape. And I'll put the tandem adapter in now. But imagine that on one side of the sky, the sun is just off and it's particularly bright there. Maybe it's another two to three stops brighter and needs to be darkened. If I put the tandem adapter in, I now have another holder on the front of the rig here, and I can put a 0.6 two-stop hard in, and that will help just feather down that bright corner of the image. And that can be rotated and positioned fine-tuned wherever you wish. Now it's important to state that as you add holders in this way, so you're narrowing the effective angle of view and it increases the danger of vignetting. So as a rule of thumb, I would suggest this kind of rig wouldn't really work with uh, anything much wider than 35 or possibly 28 millimeter on full frame, uh, or perhaps think 24 to 21 millimeter on uh, an APS crop sensor camera. There are a wide variety of filters in the 100 millimeter system. Uh, the most popular are the neutral density or ND grads. 
uh, and they're vital in landscape photography for balancing light. They come in three different strengths, one, two or three stops of light, uh, and they come in two different graduations. There's a hard grad here or a softer transition here. See the two together and it's clear what the difference is. The hard grad is really useful if one is photographing landscapes with uh, a relatively hard and well-defined horizon, whereas a soft grad is useful when the horizon is softer uh, and more uh, graduated itself. This can be because of, uh, of the effect of perspective haze, or sometimes it could be because one has reflective water, uh, a lake perhaps, or a seashore, and that in those occasions you would tend to pull the soft grad further down, right below the horizon line. That is not uncommon. So quite commonly, you'll find that the soft grad is positioned lower in the frame. And if that isn't quite enough to balance the light, then the hard grad can be applied as well in the front thread here of the holder. And the great thing is that these can be positioned in such a way it's easier to see where they are through the viewfinder. And if that isn't as easy as it might be, sometimes it's better to use live view for positioning. Uh, and, and that makes this process very straightforward. And the great thing about it is, one of the, the, the nicest things about using filters is that you can get the perfect result in camera, which minimizes post-production. And this can be checked by looking at your LCD once the picture is taken. The beauty of this system is that the holder can be rotated through 360 degrees, making it fantastically versatile and allowing us to fine tune the result perfectly. The polarizer is a very important filter for the landscape photographer. It's useful for removing glare, for increasing the saturation of colors generally, for darkening the blue of a blue sky, uh, and for removing reflections. So there are two possible solutions in the Lee 100 millimeter range. The square polarizer here, and the round screw-in polarizer here. Now if I demonstrate the square one first, this is a very simple solution. It can be applied in any filter holder any 100 millimeter filter holder like this. Usually try to center it nicely in the holder. And it can be adjusted simply by rotating the holder itself to fine tune the position. Now the only limiting feature with this is that if you wish to use it with another filter, and typically that would be a neutral density grad like this, the grad will tend to dictate the angle of the holder, uh, and that might not be optimum for the polarizer. However, you do still have the option of turning it through 90 degrees. What you will have to accept is that there is a limit of there or there, and use it in one or two of those orientations. Often that can still work. However, a more advanced solution is to use the round screw-in polarizer, uh, and this is applied to a 105 millimeter adapter ring that screws on to the front of the holder like this. I always prefer to do this operation in the hand rather than with the holder on the camera itself. To adapt your filter holder to accept the screw in polarizer, you need to add the 105 millimeter accessory ring. The first thing to do is to remove the brass screws that hold the filter slots in place. With a little care, it's straightforward enough. Now realign the guides, but remove the face plates. The accessory ring has countersunk screw holes, and it's very important that these face upwards, away from the filter holder. Pop the screws back in. I like to align all four before tightening any. Tighten the screws. There's no need to over tighten them. And there it is. All rock solid 
and the ring can now stay as a permanent fitting. And now you can adjust the polarizer by using the turret of the filter itself, like so, which means that when a grad is used, and it then dictates the position of the holder, the polarizer remains completely independent of the holder position. And clearly, that's uh, a completely independent and perfect solution for any particular fine tuning of the polarizer that's required. One of the great strengths of contemporary digital cameras is their low light performance, which uh, is amazing. Uh, and, and yet for landscape photographers, it's going in the other direction that we often crave. Uh, and if the ISO, the base ISO of the camera is 100, which it is with many, that's often too fast to get movement, to get motion, to evoke flow as we often want to in landscape photography. Lee have a solution for that, or several different solutions in fact, and that is the stopping filter range. These come in a number of different strengths, and what they allow us to do is to minimize the amount of light coming in, reduce it uh, by three stops, in the case of the Pro Glass here, 0.9 or three stop filter, or there's the little stopper, which is a six stop neutral density filter, or the top of the range, as it were, is the big stopper, which is a 10 stop light reduction filter. That takes out almost all the light coming through, just allowing a very small amount of light to pass through. Now, they're easy to use, especially the Pro Glass, which is very straightforward. Just put it in the back slot of the filter holder like that. And so long as you remember to keep light off using a hand or a hat or uh, some black towel or whatever it may be, that works absolutely fine. The little and the big stopper are slightly different. Uh, they require a more rigorous approach to the application. And if I just show you the back of the filter, you'll see that there is a foam rubber seal. Now, just to illustrate how that works, that must be applied the right way round. And that is facing towards the camera. And when we put them in, it's important to try and get that nice and even. And then once the filter is back on the adapter, it forms a good seal and a good barrier between the light and the lens itself, and that prevents flare. But one should still aim to protect or shield the filter from any ambient light. Now, one of the great strengths of this system is that not only does it slow the light down or reduce the light coming in, but unlike uh, circular systems, you can also use other filters with it, like a grad, to balance the light in the normal way. And as always with Lee, you can position the filter in any position you like. There are two dedicated lens hoods in the Lee 100 range. The universal hood here, there's also a wide angle version. And as you can see, they're based on a bellows design. And it's actually an amazingly effective piece of kit for reducing flare uh, from the sun. Uh, and it's still got two guide rails for filters at the back. And on the inside, if you wish to disassemble it, you can also put an accessory ring in for a polarizer. And there are some limitations in the sense that if you want to have the uh, grad on its side like that, well, then it becomes a, a vertical position. But actually, I have to say that the way I usually use this is in either extreme sunlight, where I may not necessarily need to use uh, a grad, uh, and it's fantastically good for that, or in the opposite condition, uh, you might say, which is rain, because it's fantastically good at keeping rain off the lens while you're shooting. And it can also be adapted in a way that most standard hoods cannot, like this, because of the bellows design, but all in all, a really interesting piece of kit.
Most landscape photographers inevitably end up carrying more than one filter. In fact, I typically use nine or 10. Uh, so a good solution if you do carry several is the 100 millimeter field pouch. It comes with a shoulder strap if you like to carry it that way. It also has a belt loop at the back, but I prefer to use it with the tripod strap and you're seeing it uh, in position here with that. A Velcro top and it has a gusseted interior which makes it very easy to get hold of the filters that you want. You can see the, uh, the type of filter from the printed information on the top of them. That helps to keep it neat. Very easy to deploy from the field pouch. And the soft fabric interior helps to keep the filters clean. So that's the Lee 100 millimeter range, the most versatile and the most robust filter system for all different types of cameras. It's the one that I've used for the last 25 years and the one I expect to use well into the future. Mm -hmm.